ready? Here we go. Ready? Right. I'm just gonna go off the cuff. Ready? Okay. Okay. All right. I'm just here we go. The, the show's already started, but we're gonna pretend like it hasn't started, and I'm okay. just gonna come off the cuff with a character. Here we go. Ready? And hello, welcome to the show. My name is Klaus. Welcome, Klaus. Invite you to like the joystick show. Bro, bro this Ooh. some this some European dude who's fucking offended he's right pissed, now, bro. Right? Arms he's, like, he's, he's like, like, I do not talk. I like do that not that sound all. like that. I do not. I do not, and it's Klaus. <laughs> it has six syllables. Right. This is horrible. This <laughs> is so bad. <laughs> Ready? Yes. I got you. Okay. Welcome to the Joystick Show. Happy holidays. We're here to, to yeah. spruce. Spruce. Get it? Like yeah. the tree? Yeah. Like the tr- like the winter tree? Like sp- spring tree. We're here to spruce <laughs> up. We're here to spruce up your week um, so that you will forever be filled with green. You know? <laughs> what is this? And then... And then um, conifer. I don't know, dude. <laughs> what trees? <laughs> you like trees? I was trying to make tree uh, puns, okay, and then I was like, man. "This doesn't work at all." You know? I'm not a fern of those. Uh, there's a tree behind Dylan. Yeah, there is. And uh, can you see it? Yeah, we and, can see and, it. And Damn, it looks nice. I ain't even noticed, bro. Damn, shout out to this production quality. Welcome to the Joystick have. Show, episode 119. It's just Dylan and I today. Yeah, great um, production quality on this one. I appreciate it. You know, yeah. I do my best. Mm-hmm. Though. This is actually the week before the actual Christmas special, yeah. so in typical joystick fashion, we uh we just we we lure you in a little bit. Mm-hmm. So you know you see a little little candy cane, red green stripe. See a little tree. It's gonna be more next week. Yeah, it's gonna, it's gonna, be, gonna be a lot of fun. Festive. And have some friends out over. You know, uh, Jerry and Joey are off tonight because Jerry is doing better things, and Joey has COVID. Yeah, that's so. dope. You know, mm-hmm. great so stuff. We're doing the responsible thing. And uh, quitting our friendship with him. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so. He's not allowed to come over here anymore. Yeah, we're going to get rid of that head. and uh, Any scene of Joey will be edited in, in post. <laughs> yeah. No, he's we're just going to get one of those big like uh, monitors and put it on the chair uh, so that he can FaceTime from home. Can we get a fat head? Remember fat heads? I'm down. Yeah. yeah. Just post them on the wall. Can we get five fat heads yeah. of all of us and just decorate <laughs> Yeah. Before I get into any dumbass fucking tangents like yeah. we're already leaking into, it'd be Very really true. helpful if you could like this episode of the Joystick Show, if you could subscribe to the boys, and uh, it's gonna be yeah. a fun one. It's I think be, so. It's gonna be a good one. I mean, Dylan can attest. I've been, I've I've been doing some really productive stuff up until we started the podcast, right? Just, yeah. Just setting up and nothing more, right? Mm-hmm. No, nothing, nothing, nothing at all. At all. Mm-hmm. No, definitely not a lot of distractions. <laughs> Not at all. I can't help it, all right? Yeah. When Bobby gets ready, he likes to... Uh, he maybe, and I want to say in a span of about 10 minutes, created 55 original characters. And like three of them were good. Yeah. The, the, quite a few. All of them were funny. You, they, they were just good funny or bad funny. Yeah. I, yeah. They were all funny, though. Yeah. Shout Fucking to, impressive. Shout out to the spaghetti farm. There was also something I said to Bobby, and I was like, I'm going like, to say it to you on the podcast. Now I don't fucking remember. Oh, you were going to tell me about... Uh, you were going to tell me about the road to El Dorado. It's not- how it's lost in the jungles of El Dorado. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck is that? I don't even know what I that is. I don't know, man. Look, all right. I'm going to be honest with you, audience. I took a bit of a tea break, like a little four-day tea breaky-wakey, mm-hmm. and I made the made the, the accident to, to ha- you know, recreationally indulge with my friend here, and then... Mm-hmm. Yeah. So... The only way I know how to cope with it is just how to fucking characters, you know? Yeah, and that gets you out of it. So, you know. The way we actually weren't even able allowed to, like, get down here until we watched two scenes from Family Guy. Yeah. And that really motivated us. It really us helped to, me. Yeah. Can I Can I be honest? Mm-hmm. Out of everything that we did, I think my favorite part, what song was I singing that I added Bazinga to it? Oh, it was Ace of Bases. Yeah. I saw the sign. Yes. I was just down here setting up the lights like, I got Bazinga. It didn't fit the rhythm. It barely <laughs> even fit. Bobby had to really work but it I'm, to make I'm it even fit. I'm fucking crying to yeah. myself. Yeah. I got the thing going. And, I, and I YouTubed it to try to find if someone else had this genius idea. Uh, they, they, they have not. Are you? Nobody's jumped on this. <laughs> Nobody story? has thought of adding Big Bang Stay Theory fucking themes. Fucking soon. There, there is, there is a clip called Buzz Singa that has eight million views. So I think we can really hop on that. Yeah, you know? Yeah. Holy oh, shit! shit yeah, what a great episode so far. Is it? Yeah, I, I have I have a thing to fucking talk about. Yeah, I, what's I that, do. buddy? So last week I was gonna segue this, but uh, a lot has developed in the world of um controversy and scams and scandals and things of that nature. Oh shit! Do we still yes. love scandals? We do actually. But this one is a lot different because it is considering and involving the scamming of people's money. So now, firstly, I love good scam content. Kid Boga is one of my favorite oh, streamers. Legend. Le- legend. 
uh we have other people uh on youtube who cover that as well they cover like crypto scams and stuff like that i'm really big on that because they're good at like it's also really informative too. yeah uh and they're good at explaining things because it comes with the, like crypto and scamming people sometimes it's really you know complex ways of how they scam you Indeed. so the last probably about six to eight months i've noticed that there's a there was a huge influx of people i watched being sponsored by a specific company much like Raycon came out, which was just Ray J, his fucking earbuds. Sick. And uh, that company is Established Titles. Now, I don't know. Have you ever heard of this company? Nope. Okay. So, uh, it is a company that that was founded maybe about four or five years ago. And they spend over 60% of their marketing budget solely on YouTube advertising and YouTube deals with creators. So, what they, they what's say... That's their spiel. So, basically how the company works. I remember Joey complained about it in chat a few months ago and i told him yeah that's like a scam or whatever essentially it is a uh it is a title that you get sent in the mail it's like 50 to 200 dollars depending on what package you buy and essentially it is a title which says that you are an official lord or lady i've seen by like scottish Scotland. customs yeah, yeah, yeah. and because you own like a percentage of land or so stupid basically shit. you own a one square foot piece of land Got in it. scotland therefore that can by law in theory make you a lord, lord or, or lady. lady and then you will be able to call yourself a lord or lady yeah. Um, and the, how this is a good thing is that every square foot you buy, they plant trees. Mm-hmm. So it's pr- the land you're buying is protected forest. Okay. So it's like you're protecting the woodlands, I guess. Um, now, if you have, if you think about it for more than a couple of minutes, you don't actually become a lord or lady. What? Because it's that's like you would have to be like a citizen of Scotland to like okay. do that. And buying a piece of one foot of land doesn't do that. You're telling me I can't just be a fucking lord, No, you can Yeah. You had me sold up until right there, man. So what happened was uh, essentially, if you you think about it for a little bit, you're like, yeah, this isn't really like a real thing. Uh, But they said in the ad that it was real, that you would actually become a lord or lady and that you actually owned land. But there's a specific thing in like Scottish law saying that if you did own land, it's considered a souvenir plot and you actually can't do anything with it. In fact, if you were trying to go to your plot of land in Scotland, you would be arrested because oh, it's, shit. Pro- it's protected land. Uh-huh. Uh, so essentially a YouTuber came out, one of the YouTubers, I think his name Scott Schaefer, he came out and essentially was like, hey guys, he did a 30 minute video about how they are a scam. And at first I just thought, oh, they misled people. Right. Mm-hmm. They said, hey, this was a real thing. And it turned out that people bought it and it wasn't a real thing. Yeah. Uh, this company is actually a scheme of about seven or eight different companies all funded out of Hong Kong. Each one basically scams people in a different way. Huh. So their first company, I forgot his name is. I don't even want to give him fucking credibility because he's a criminal essentially. Yeah. But uh, there's like uh, the CEO, her name is Catherine Yip, I believe. And there's like, it's the same four or five people that run all of the same com- yeah, yeah, the companies. Yeah, makes sense. Uh, the first company was a, a, a company by the name of Deal Dash, which came out in like the early to mid 2000s. Now that name might sound familiar because they used to run these ads on commercial that was like, I got an iPad for $12. And they would run these ads all over like late at night. Yeah. But the gimmick of that uh, it's not like e- eBay where you can just kind of do the auction and it goes through. Yeah, yeah. It's like uh, you pay for each bid. Yeah. So you won the iPad for twelve dollars, but you but had the bid one hundred and twenty. Yeah, or one hundred and fifty, and it's like one hundred and fifty is still good for the iPad, but you paid that. It's not eighteen dollars. Yeah. So that was their first company, and basically every few years they come up with a new way to just like you know mislead you yeah one of the and now he um so essentially how this developed over the last week and a half is that they sent out a newsletter to all of the creators they collaborated with saying that there were unwarranted attacks on their character and that they were going to sue the person doing it being scott Schaefer, yeah. the guy who did the video but they kept it like super anonymous which led to basically every YouTuber turning on them and being like, hey, you're a fucking scam. And we didn't read like we just and all of the YouTubers are like we take they paid, you know, and some people actually said that these YouTubers were getting paid anywhere from 10 to 50 K a month to support a company that sold Scottish titles. That's how you know it. Like that is insane marketing. Imagine getting paid that much money. I know. 
I mean, I, I fucking I wish for like, this. This would be cool. We would have taken that in a heartbeat if a company was like, "Hey, a thousand dollars a month." Yeah, we would. Yeah, Fuck we'd yeah. take that in a fucking heartbeat. So it's like I kind of don't blame the creators for doing that. But uh, now they don't do. They've ended every single YouTube contract they have because they got caught. Uh, there's also another con- uh, company they run uh, by the name of Kamikoto Knives. Okay. Which essentially they sell the most high quality knives crafted from the forge of Japan. I don't know why like every scam they have has like a culture attached. Okay, yeah. Like it's like, oh, the culture of, you know, whatever, like we were talking about before. Or the culture of Yeah, Scotland or Japanese knives. They're made in China with the lowest quality stainless steel. Um in fact they have one knife that is made in Japan and is like $150 and it's always sold out. It's not even real. <laughs> they made up a knife so that they can say by law because it's not illegal. They make a knife that is from Japan. Which it, it's it's actually These not- guys are fucking talented. <laughs> yeah, with this they, shit. Are, they are they are they are the most ske- like schemey and it's like not take they're correct that it's like not really a scam. Yeah. But it is. At the end of the day, that that is illegal. You're you're not allowed to falsely advertise. Yeah. And that. Uh, so if you guys see any of these companies, I think they're gonna disappear for a bit. And then in five years, it's like you can buy a Mongolian bowl. That's the fuck you know. They're gonna yeah. come up with some shit. But uh, everyone, be careful because uh, Dalton Voicey, Galton. Gal- I don't know. They have like some weird ass okay. name. But uh, watch out for them because they'll. Uh, They'll try to make you buy a deed. I, I don't know why I just pictured. Remember the old infomercials for like the music compilations where they would be like seventies rock classics. And yeah, play, like, and it'd know, keep going forever. Like Brian Adams. It'd be so, thirty like, minutes. The, the things would come up like that, like that. But it's like classic Mongolian throat slinging. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's like <laughs> right. Oh, that'd yeah. be good. Amazing. That'd be solid. So I guess you know. I guess we're not going to be getting any YouTube sponsorship from the title people. Maybe we could get like. Uh, like Nord VPN. Oh yeah, everyone gets those. Or maybe uh Skillshare. Uh, Skillshare. Maybe audible.com. Oh, uh, what's the what's not what's the, that game? the website one? Not Wix. What's the website? Oh, Squarespace. Yeah, Squarespace. Now, what's the game, bro, that everybody Uh, uh Raid Shadow Legends. Raid Shadow Legends, bro. Speaking of <laughs> remember to play written nah, off don't you know yeah. and even if we did it'd be the quickest fucking ad in the world like, play that game but you please. know those every you, you know those motherfuckers pay out bro you know dude it's a- i i knew a fucking um a, a speed runner i won't say who just in case this blows up or whatever but he he got sponsored by raid shadow legends and like since he's kind of like a low He's he's you know he's popular but he's he's not pulling in like thousands mm-hmm. of viewers he pulls in like maybe average 100 150 viewers a stream. Yeah. But since his his stream is relatively low in comparison to the other sh- content creators that raid sponsors, he was like really open and upfront to the community about like how the sponsorship works and shit like that. Yeah. He's literally like He's just on his couch and he's like, yeah, man, if I get like 20 more Raid Shadow Legend dollars or, or downloads, I get like another 200 bucks. So it's like, can you just fucking, you could delete it right after. Just download it, play the tutorial. And everybody's like, yeah, sure, fine. Yeah, 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 like, that's lot. how we made money. I was yeah. like, damn, that's insane. Mm-hmm. I look, you want to get a sponsorship just so that I can actually be creative with the fucking ad. You yeah. Know what I mean? and, 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 and even then, it's just kind of like, I don't even mind doing like some like shady BuzzFeed branded content. You, you know mean? what I mean? Like we do, like Arizona the table, but it's brought to you by, by actually, Arizona. yeah. Are you fucking kidding me? I'd do yeah. that in a heartbeat. We yeah. have free Arizona. Mm-hmm. Well, that's the thing. It's like it, it's so much easier to have like that connection. You uh-huh. know, as long as we don't like panda someone to yeah. reference last week. Yeah, uh, but you know, we had definitely a, possible. We had a really gold idea years ago. It was when we were actually working on the table. Yes. To sneak a can of Arizona into every single production that we put in joystick. And then we, we stopped doing that. Yeah, if you look behind me. <laughs> yeah, right. You'll see a Febreze that we used to spray the room after Hunter shits in the bathroom. Yeah, that is... Uh, and an Arizona can, yeah. right? Right next to it. No, yeah. There's Arizona in the Febreze. Yeah. yeah. There's Arizona in the shit. Yeah. <laughs> the state. Not, not, the, not, the, oh, not okay. the drink. Not the drink. That makes a lot more sense. Yeah. Fucking... Uh, we are about to say some shit. I was? You're, yeah. You were, you were like, you were on, you were about to like segue to something, I feel. I was. I was going to segue some shit. Yeah. I mean, I was actually going to talk about something that's been pretty big. Something that's been big in the world. Yeah. Something that, uh, that you could put Drink. in a cup. 
You drink, perhaps? And of course I am talking about competitive women's volleyball. Yeah. Uh it's mm-hmm. been a great it's been a great time for It's been a great tourney out here. For CW C C W V B. You know, just an acronym I know by heart Can because I'm a big community fan. women's volleyball. Yeah, no, can, uh, um, Clyde Wilds vaginal big, yeah. <laughs> Put that on screen. I need I need subtitles for that specifically. I'm talking about the fucking World Cup. Yeah, Bobby's talking about a uh, soccer event. I felt I got involved with this because I've been playing FIFA the last few days. A lot of FIFA. I mean, I, I put it in the chat the other day, or I may have even mentioned it on the podcast, where I said, like, I'm 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 not a big soccer fan, but I I do think it's kind of fair to say that the World Cup, internationally speaking, has got to be, like, the hypest sports event, period. Yeah, it is. Right? It is. It is. Uh, I think it's bigger than the Olympics. I think it is. It is bigger than the Olympics because it is. It's the biggest sport with the, the, the nationalism aspect. Yeah, with and like it's a the, centralized sport, yeah. right? Because if we're being honest... Like yeah, you could watch the Olympics, but who the fuck really cares about? You don't know anybody, really. Yeah. Like, and even if you don't know anybody, it's like you know you have something to root for. It's like the Olympics is so like, I don't want to shit on the Olympics, but half the people don't even know what the fuck's going on no, in yeah, the Olympics. It's true. I mean, they like literally... the only time something pops off at the Olympics is when like one athlete wins a bunch of shit, and yeah. it's like oh. Apollo, the coolest thing that's look happened. at Apollo Ono's hair, you know, like really in this fucking Michael soul patch. Phelps ripped a bong, you yeah, know, like that's like, literally. That's what they get, yeah. but the World Cup is like drama twenty four seven. It like you said, it's the national pride behind it. So like you know, a country loses and a nation cries. It's like a whole fucking yeah. It's fucking huge, bro. It's fucking gigantic. I mean, it, it is. Um, and this year is actually like quite good as well. I would, a lot I would of upsets. say, yeah, quite a few upsets. I would say. I know Croatia is an upset. I don't want to not give them the ben- like credit because Croatia is great and they upset Brazil. But like Croatia's been good. Yeah, I Cro- think- Croatia has been good. There are several Croatian players playing on like Real Madrid. You know, yeah, I think even more so than that, it was the Morocco over Portugal, which was. And who did Morocco beat before that too? They, they beat. beat I forgot, but they 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 absolutely popped off. Yeah. I I, I want to say that watching. I don't know what they gave to the Moroccan goalkeeper. I'm, I'm blanking on his name right now. That guy is absolutely insane. Mm-hmm. He literally like slingshots to the ball That's whenever the save it. Like he hasn't. Nobody scored on him like in a while. So far. Yeah. And uh, and I got I got to watch the England France game. Mm-hmm. That one was crazy because I think it was like two one or something like that. And fucking England had a, a free kick. It was like the last play of the game, and the dude missed it by inches. Mm-hmm. By inches. Yeah. <laughs> Oof. upsetting but it's crazy because then you see it like i don't know how to explain it i thought about it in that moment where you see like all those players fall to the ground and either they're they're cheering or crying or some yeah. of them are cheering and crying and stuff like that and it's like i'm not even a, a giant sports fan but that to me is why sports are fucking dope that it, it, it's all about the storyline and the the passion and yeah. like that the emotion like no one really like not to say no one really cares what goes on but it's like there's a reason why you're playing. Yeah. It's not just you're playing. You know what I and, mean? And Either there's money on the line or there's pride on the line. And there's a reason why you're watching, right? Yeah. Because you fucking care. Mm-hmm. I mean, not me, but I just watched so I could talk about it on, mm-hmm. my, on my talkie show. On your talkie show. On my talkie show. Welcome to my talkie show. My name is John F. Talk, and today we're gonna no. be, today I'm gonna be talking to my friend Dylan. Dylan, what would you like to talk about? Would you like to talk about I don't talking? I do not I do not like we my new co host at all. We could talk about talkies. Oh we no. We could talk about walkie talkies. Oh god. Yeah. We could talk about I can't even jump out the window. We're in the basement. We could talk about TikTok. <laughs> not to be confused with TikTok. TikTok, it's a different it's an app I developed. How about how about the snap? How about Tic Tacs? No, 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 no. It, it, TikTok. You gotta listen, Dylan. Okay, we got Tic Tac, there's Tic Tac, and then there's Tic Tac. Okay, Tic Tac oh, is my own. Any, guys, if you're watching still, just like, <laughs> like honestly, I've skip, been doing this for way too skip, long. Skip the fucking to. I was in, uh, oh my God, I was in I was in Jersey. Yeah. Shout out to, uh, shout out to my girl, Jelly. <laughs> She's in Argentina for a month, but I was out in Jersey spending the weekend with her, and we ended up at the American Dream Mall, yeah. which uh, Dylan has talked about before a couple of times on the podcast. I but have. I I got to go visit it for the first time, and it was fucking super dope. Got tons of cool pictures. There's a fucking ice rink and an amusement park and a water park, and it's ridiculous yeah. for a mall. Yeah, um, 
more specifically, more centralized, we were walking around and noticed that there was a Toys R Us in the mall, which is kind of interesting because like they all closed. Or whatever, yeah, there's so. only the few independent. Exactly. Ones, so we went in and it was pretty cool. We were felt like a kid again, not to be too cliche because you know I don't. I totally forgot what it was like to walk into a fucking Toys R Us. It's been forever, but it was so dope. I would always try to ride the bikes and get yelled at. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. But um, those bikes are so cool. I wanted to. Fucking we walk <laughs> in and there's this guy sat up at the front and he's doing magic because they're selling like magic kits for the holiday season and stuff like that okay and we walk past it or whatever and uh you know immediately he starts doing his uh his pitch you know he's like hey man da-da-da, da-da-da, magic da-da-da. and i'm just trying to walk past because i the way i was looking at it is we are the mall closes at 10 it's like 8 45 yeah. we got to do as much as we can do in this time frame right mm-hmm. My girlfriend, whom I love with all my heart, was like, he does magic. My boy, my boyfriend does magic. And I'm just like, oh, oh God. Oh, oh. And to be fair, you know, we I, we ended up having like a pretty cool nerdy little talk where I was being nice. And I was like, oh, man, I would have never even thought to combine this with that. It's such a great idea. This down the third. But the whole time I'm there, I'm just like, I don't want to buy anything. You're like, it's, you're like, damn, I, I got to go to it sugar. I got to fucking. No, I realize that that's yeah. like one of my least favorite positions to ever be in. Like being be, like somebody selling you something and you just not wanting anything to do with it, you know, because you can tell how much effort they're putting in. And then you're just kind of like, I don't I don't yeah, want it. That's why I like when they do it on the subway and I could just walk past you fast. But even the subway is different because the subway, it's like that's not it's not a fucking marketplace. You know, yeah, you're technically allowed to like ignore those people i yes. mean i'm not saying you're not a, a yeah i can ignore, ignore i can't ignore people at the mall no no i know I but but i'm easily. saying like when they're at the mall they're allowed to be there you know like it's technically their job to be there and to sell this to you so you could tell they put a lot more effort and creativity and, yeah. and heart into it but then you're just there like i don't want to buy led lights that i could turn on behind my thumb you know like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but regardless uh fucking Oh man, I was gonna go somewhere with that. Yeah, American Dream Mall. Things. No, what? with the selling things, with the selling and the buying. Oh no, I was gonna tell you. <laughs> speaking of fucking, shut up, Dylan. I was gonna tell you. What a good segue. I was gonna no, I was because uh, I was on the subway last week and this guy comes on, and I it was like I saw him in my peripheral on the left, mm-hmm. like that's how big of a of a presence it was. Mm-hmm. So it was a man who got on the train with, uh, what do you call those things? The hand, oh, hand trucks? Yes, I've seen this guy. Yes. Seen this guy? Yes, I've seen this with guy. With the boxes stacked up taller than him. Yes. Who sells snacks, ice cold water, and pepper spray. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. There, there's mul- okay, so there's multiple people uh-huh. that do this now. And there's also one guy who, I don't know what he was thinking, but he legit had just like, he was selling apparel. Huh. He was selling Hanes, the undershirts, uh-huh. and underwear. In in like a in like a laundry cart like like the one that you bring to like yeah. the laundromat. Interesting. Yeah, but the hand truck guy, I've seen I've seen two different hand truck people. So well, the hand truck guy, I thought was cool because I was like, that's a variety. This guy's got shit. Yeah. You know, he's out there, he's protecting people. He's got ice cold water for people who might be dehydrated, and he has every fucking snack he could get. The at famous BJ's. Amos, uh, yep. fucking Welsh Rice fruit Krispy snacks. Treats. You know, never anything you actually want, but he's it's got there. It yeah, he's there. got it. It's like you walk in the store, it's like there it is probably just like robs a middle school or something comes back with like quaker fucking what do you call those things Crunch he has bars. the fucking he has the cereal things yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he has, has the name of the school it's always it. the school snacks yeah, it's yeah, always, yeah, yeah. one time he's one time they're gonna come on and be like chocolate milk <laughs> cartons of chocolate milk, chocolate milk to whole $1. milk <laughs> <laughs> oh my god what well, was like i remember a comedian had a joke about that he's like i know there's crackheads in my neighborhood i have a 24-hour pawn shop in my neighborhood oh, yeah, yeah. I think it's Hannibal Bird. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's like, what? Well, like, what do you need? Oh, I got this lamp. I gotta sell at three in the morning. Uh-huh. Fucking great. No, I was also gonna say that uh, before we started this podcast, you and I got to witness a pretty interesting event. Oh God, yeah. An event that's actually being watched by over a quarter of a million people. Uh, actually, uh, I will say that when 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 the event we watch ended. It, the viewership went down by like 15k yeah I'm just yeah it went down a little bit but uh we got to watch a little bit of ludwig's chess boxing event which is going on tonight you know a couple days before you're watching this yeah. but uh it's actually pretty big i mean in terms of people watching from home uh they struck up a deal with dave and buster so they're streaming it at like every dave and buster so nice. you, you could just go 
drink and watch nerds box each other and that's play nice. chess. I didn't even know that. That's cool. Uh, but you know, there, there's chess boxing, which was made popular by the Wu Tang Clan. Yeah. The misery of chess bot, whatever that. Was. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it's a it's this weird, bizarre sport that combines chess and boxing, where people play chess and then they go into a they round of get boxing. Out, yeah. yeah, exactly. And Ludwig uh, wanted to popularize the sport by inviting a bunch of pretty cool internet personalities and uh, content creators. But he also invited some Smash Brothers players to do the first ever Melee boxing event where uh, Super Smash Brothers Melee players do get out in Melee and then in between go into rounds of boxing. Which, I, if I heard of this idea prior to us watching it, yeah. I would have had a lot more questions and a fucking hysterical thoughts in my yeah, yeah, yeah. What a just amazing thoughts. And uh, we tuned in just in time to watch two legends, uh, Kalindi KJH and Fiction Shepard Lima do get out. Two melee legends. Uh, here's a picture, like the promotional art, so you can see what these two absolute athletes look like. And uh, man, that was these fucking shredded individuals. That was entertainment to um, the max. Was it? It was. Yeah. Honestly speaking. Like, don't get me wrong. They're professional Smash Brothers players. They're not professional boxers. But I think I was more entertained in watching how fucking tired they were over the actual fight. Yeah, that was fucking Because they would stop the boxing portion, and they would literally be breathing for, like, four minutes. Like, Mm. they would just be like, I can't. We got to And then they'd they'd start the game, and they're fucking dry heaving as they're playing a fast-paced game. And, And yeah, Melee is super fast-paced to the point where people who already play it, like, their heart races. Like, they're not breathing like that, but... You just fought for ninety seconds in the fucking in the ring. Great, great yeah. stuff, man. I gotta show my dad that. Yeah, it was it was like imagine thirty seconds of good boxing and then a minute of just whatever. Yeah, yeah, just just a lot of like, and good boxing is 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 pushing it. Yes, but they're they're. It was land- like thirty minutes of aggression. They're they're landing shot. Or yeah, targeted. Aggression. Yes, yes, and that I think that was their main problem. Focalized aggression. That was their main issue. They would just go crazy, and it's like guys, you got ninety seconds. Yeah, and you're not boxers. And one of the guys, he they, he put on over 15 pounds to match the weight. Yeah. So his cardio is absolutely rocked. He mm-hmm. like I I can't even think of doing that. Yeah, we're 15 pounds and then half the box. No. Yeah. No. Thank no, you. No. 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 Oof. That was fun though. Oh, it was hysterical. And I want to I mean, go back up because there's gonna be another one, but it's it's two people from the melee community, Tof and Hugs, but they're they're doing the chess boxing. They're not doing melee. Oh, they're actually playing chess. Playing chess. But at least they're boxing. Yeah. And they're sort of more fit, you know. So I'd be interested to see that. I think I think they'll they'll be a better batch. They've got more more meat on their bones, so to speak. So, you know, I'm just here to see people get hurt. <laughs> oh, oh, definitely. That's why we watch fights, right? Yeah. I mean, I don't know. I just think it's so cool that like humans are so competitive that we've made everything competitive. And work every year. We come up with like new ways to do it. You know what I mean. Except we got really uncreative to the point where we just have to mash two things together. Which I don't think that's bad. I think that's still good. That's still a new thing. Uh huh. To make to put two things and put them together, it's a new thing, right? The double down sandwich. That's not chicken as bread. That's a whole different sandwich. <laughs> that was that was a jump. Whoa. Yeah, Bobby's thinking. Bobby's like, I forgot about that existing. Bobby's like, whoa. I'm I, like, you made probably a good point, but as soon as you said double down, it was just like a, a wave of nostalgia and deliciousness. Can we go back a couple seconds here and reintroduce the double down analogy, please? Yeah. So, can, what were you saying? I was saying that when you take two or more things and put them together, yeah, we're not thinking about the two separate things. It's a new. It's a new. Yeah. And then you brought in the double down. Yeah, because the double down, it's the the whole like knock against it was that it was just a sandwich, but the chicken with the, were the buns. Yeah, but it's fucking magical. So, Bob, you already oh, shut up. So, if we're talking like chess boxing, and you're combining chess and boxing, what are we combining with the double down? The chicken buns with the sandwich. Yes. To make the double down. Yeah. Okay. I'm. I'm. Because you because you're now. making compromises. I'm on board. It's not a one to one swap. You I got know? it. I got yeah. it. I needed that, but yes. we're good. Um, we got it, guys. We figured it out. <laughs> Tune in next week for more uh for more sandwich investigations. Spaghetti fun. Yeah. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Bobby's gonna pull that out in our fucking forties. This is gonna be like yo, Bob, Dylan, yo, Dylan. 
spaghetti. Look, I don't fella. care if it's untasteful. Okay, I went on to a 15 minute rant where Kyle Rittenhouse owned a spaghetti restaurant that's that's like Southern Ranch style. No, yeah, yeah, farm. and it's like they grew the farm and out they, of. The, yeah, I, yeah. I still didn't really grab. Like, I imagine like a giant pit and spaghetti formed around, and there's like a complex. I thought that some crowd was like, "What? It just can't grow on the ground. It can't be a fucking tree." They tell me it can't be spaghetti tree. You can't grow spaghetti. You can grow spaghetti tree. <laughs> Girl, fucking catch me at the Damn, spaghetti I, farm. I bro. thought I had a segue and everything. Fuck Kyle Rittenhouse. Catch Bobby Rosario spaghetti farm. This is my new life goal. <laughs> I'm sorry, you're not gonna actually see Joystick like, episode like, 120. What happened to the podcast? Oh, what happened had, to Bobby? He moved we actually to South had this Dakota. idea to make a lot of videos in December, but Bobby decided it'd be a much better way to go out into Kansas and grow spaghetti. <laughs> <laughs> grow spaghetti i will make it happen bro hold on let me let me google that real quick can you grow spaghetti well i mean you know what's gonna come up spaghetti squash is gonna come up you know hold on can you grow spaghetti how to grow spaghetti Is that Kyle Rittenhouse? What plant makes spaghetti? Yo, yo, guys, there's a video on YouTube on his screen, and it's literally Kyle Rittenhouse. I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's holding the. He's holding. He's holding a hoe in one hand and spaghetti in the other. <laughs> Holy shit! No, fuck it. I think it is spaghetti swash. Yeah. Which, by the way, hey, you can fool people. Yeah, that's fucked up. This YouTube video is called How to Grow Spaghetti, and then they hit a little asterisk after the spaghetti. How shitty is yeah, that? Yeah, yeah, Bob. They, fooled, they fooled people like you. Everyday bra is perfected for small boobs. It's good to know. Just, you know, in case you were looking. Bob, Bobby, they know Bobby's got a little bit of That's spaghetti. I mean, it's not Kyle Rittenhouse, but <laughs> it's Gardener Scott. <laughs> My man's got 324,000 subscribers. Holy shit. And here's a complete explanation and demonstration of how to grow spaghetti. We found it. We found it. So don't crush my fucking dream, Dylan, because I will be a spaghetti farmer and I will own the spaghetti farm. Okay. Make sure to come down right off of Route I-7. That's the route is I I is that those are two different road systems. I I captain. <laughs> People are gonna be like, "Is is Bobby okay health wise? Like, is it like <laughs> not this yeah, episode? Yeah, I, <laughs> not this. I'd episode. love to see like the fucking if you had the fucking thing on your head, how the things it would say. What thing? The E K E E G. The oh, the fucking the brain thingy. My uh, my electromagnetic turban. Yes, yeah. I had a segue, and now it's like it's spaghetti farm really through that shit. You off. had a segue? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, cause like I was talking about how like a tons of shit are like really competitive now uh-huh. before I, I did the double down thing and I was going to say how, what the fuck is this episode? Anyways, I think we, are we just hungry and we're just like bringing food into everything? I mean, I'm definitely gone. I'll yeah. tell you that much. Um, but I was going to say how much like how people are getting really competitive about stuff. There is a competitive scene that is getting a little too, uh, a little too crazy. Interesting. And that is the world of GeoGuessr. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. you're yes. talking about this. A little um, bit. so I I got back into GeoGuessr probably last week. I've had a lot of schoolwork, so I mm-hmm. only played for like an hour or so at, at a time. But uh, everyone is really good now, and uh, it is it is not that much fun anymore. Mm. Like it's gotten to the point where like the way you have to play the game is just like memori- memorizing everything. And I kind of don't like that. I kind of like going off of vibes. I kind of like that. Yeah. Where you're like you just know you're like, oh yeah, it's based off this or based off that. But it's just kind of like, oh, they, this one has a white car with a with with weird headlights. They only have that truck in Western Uganda, and then you know you're in Western yeah, Uganda. And-, and I'm like, we're like not even looking at the game anymore. You know, it like it's the metas are getting a little. You're just like paying attention to like license plate. Yeah, fucking... it's 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 a little the license plate. That's a little. That's like detective okay, work. Yeah, no, that's a little no. different. But it's like. But like when you're looking at a pylon and like fucking like. It's gotten it's gone a little too far. Uh-huh. But I I mean it's good because like that's that's how like the top people compete, where it's like you don't even move, and you people can get a perfect score. Without moving, which back a year ago was fucking unheard of. Getting like a whole game, like five in a row of yeah. getting perfect scores was like insane. Without, what, con- what constitutes a perfect score? Like, do you, how close do you have to be? Depends on the map. 
Okay. Some maps, some maps, it's like 10, 20 meters. Okay. Other ones have a lot more leeway, like a hundred and fifty ish. Because in my head, I was like, you don't have to pinpoint that shit. No, <laughs> no, but you get, but you have to get pretty close. Like yeah, you have yeah. to, like, no, I'd on, imagine on some maps, you have to get like the same road, you know. Mm-hmm. But with just looking at like a ridge and being like, oh, that kind of lines up with this, and getting it is like some of the most ridiculous stuff I've ever seen, and I have no fucking chance. Yeah. Um. It, it is quite uh quite insane. However, there is one thing I do I do like the format and the overall like it's fucking exciting. Um. After the way they do it is after five rounds or maybe four rounds, a multiplier kicks in. Interesting. So double damage, triple damage, quadruple damage. We're at the point where it's like twenty k damage, twenty x damage, where like you can be a little bit off and lose. What do you mean damage? So basically, how the tournaments work is essentially. It's a duel. So it's teams. So essentially how it works is one side guesses and the other side guesses. Mm -hmm. And then whoever's closest, you lose points if you're further away. And then depending on how much the distance is, that's how much points you lose. Uh, And first one that gets to zero loses. Yes, it's a health meter. And in the regular game mode, you there's a healing round and you can like get back in the game they don't have that in the tournament the tournament just keeps going sense, yeah. and it, it is absolutely ridiculous in the way that the timer doesn't start until someone guesses so there is no time limit got it meaning that people can literally sit there and get like fi- a perfect score mm-hmm. it's called a 5k which got is it. that's like the max score and it i'm st- it, it, it it we need to go to the location <laughs> go go and that's the thing that people like pointed out to like conclude how amazing of a game which if you haven't played good geoguesser go play geoguesser it's very fun um that these are real places mm-hmm. you know you're looking at someone at geoguesser and it goes to street view and you're in fucking thailand and you see some dude at the camera like you know yeah, we're... just like post it up and you're like damn that's a real person yeah they live on that house that they're walking to they literally walk two miles just to get fucking water and you're sitting at your two thousand dollar computer playing for money. <laughs> yeah, playing for playing for a prize pool. Not even looking at the guy, looking at like the light yeah, pole yeah, next yeah. to him. Yeah, yeah, being like, fuck this dude with an entire life story and goals and aspirations. This pylon tells us we're not even in Thailand, we're yep. in Cambodia. <laughs> it's like, God damn it. Exactly. <laughs> Stupid man. I love it though. It's 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 lovely. Yeah, it's lovely. Can. It's a special place in my heart. I was gonna say I had something and then, you know, I forgot it. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's been was, happening. Yeah, you know how it be. Oh, yeah, that's what I was going to say. I was going to say that I mentioned earlier that Jelly is uh, she's on vacation. So I had a, I have a couple goals. As you know, we're trying to get some holiday-themed content out in a, in a, in a great fashion for December. So mm-hmm. stay tuned for that, hopefully. But another goal that I have is I want to use my spare time to not only play some video games, but stream some games because I'm officially six Platinums away. I got Platinum 94 recently. What was it? Spirit of the North. Oh, okay. It's this little game where he plays an Arctic fox. Have I, have I played this? I think I've played this. It, it sounds like a Dylan game, low-key. It's like, it's pretty, I don't know. This isn't a Spirit of the North review. It's just like, it's not amazing. It's like, you know, it's like made by a small indie team. Okay, that compared to Ether 1, though. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, this is way more playable than Ether One, if I'm being honest. You know, the best way I could describe the Spirit of the North game is it kind of feels like what it feels like Stray if it wasn't fully developed. Oh, okay. like they're like, let's make a game where you play as a fox and you yeah, run around, super aesthetic and all this shit. But okay. like, it's not perfect nearly as enough. It's fun, it's cool, it's a quick platinum. Like, Have I've you ever like played the game days. AER? No. Oh, okay. I confuse it with that game, I think. That's another game that you should look into. It's like a three hour platinum. It's pretty fun. Is it a fox? It's you're you're like a winged animal. Oh. But it's a similar concept that like you're a winged person. Oh, okay. I mean I never said there were wings. Yeah, I did though. So So what's up with that? So what's up with that? You have wings. William Wing. No, you're a wing. You have a, wing, you're an angel. Wingus. Wing there's a name there. Hold on. Wing ding bing fring fring the wing wing. All right, but you should honestly, Bob, edit until you come up with a joke. <laughs> like, just cut, like, you just did, like, a crude cut, and it's like, hey. Wing, wing, boy. There <laughs> you go. Found it. <laughs> Fuck it. Uh, you ready to go into Jam and Yam, man? Yeah, of course. <laughs> this has been fun. Yeah. <laughs> what are we calling this episode? Bobby needs sleep. Yeah, I think so. The episode. Nice. Do you know your... Uh... My jam? Yeah. Yeah, I do. Go for it. 
Oh, I was just going to say that my jam this week, it was one of those nail biters where it really could have been between two. I know that. And normally I would shout out the second song, except there's a pretty strong chance it'll end up being jam of the week. For Next week. 120, if I'm being honest. So in the meantime, I thought it'd be true to myself and true to the song that I am picking this week since it was the jam of, you know, pretty much the whole week up until yesterday when I mm-hmm. found the song or rediscovered it. Uh, and that song is going to be The News by Paramore. It's uh, Paramore's coming back in a really new, fun way. I mean, I was kind of listening to the song on the train going into work last week, and I really came to realize that, that Paramore's got to be, like, one of my favorite bands. They're really They're consistent. Good. They really are. Even when they come out and they make, like, a poppy album, like, After Laughter, it was still good. Like, it had some hits on it. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, like, the fact that now they're transitioning into, like, like you said earlier, that it's kind of half poppy, but also kind of half that old emo paramore sound yeah. i love it i really like what they're doing and i'm here for it mm-hmm. Haley williams's voice is beautiful Mwah. it is Moto bene. catch me at the spaghetti farm can we pretend like airplanes and the nice guy are like shooting stars I, they, they made a sequel to that song i read that on her wikipedia page i think eminem is on it it's called plane crap no it's just called uh i think it's called like planes 2 or airplanes 2 or something like that that's horrible dude Yeah, can we look that up really quickly yeah hold on do you want to do your yeah year as year? we go yeah so my yam of the week is uh moniker by underscores uh-huh. i've picked one of his songs before i would like to consider him like the the creator of hyperpop i know that's like a big uh claim a big claim it was 100 gex dylan that's the thing well the thing is is that maybe because dylan brady has made music for a yeah. long time however um underscores blew up in like the 2020 2021 when hyperpop was really taking off but his discography goes back to 2016 on soundcloud mm-hmm. and this song goes from 2019 uh and it's it's basically hyper pop it's a lot more like r&b singer songwritery okay. but yeah that's fire uh, it has i don't know what the melody is from but it's like i want to say that the melody of the song is from a different catchy song okay but it's it's like the nicest beat ever for sure fire and fire. just just to iterate it says here in 2010, she was featured on the single Airplanes by B.O.B. It peaked at number two in the U.S. Billboard Hot 100. A sequel to the song, Airplanes Part 2, features new verses from B.O.B. and a verse from Eminem, while Williams' vocals remain the same. The collaboration led to a Grammy nomination for Best Pop Collaboration with Vocals. Can't... That got nominated? I guess. I don't know. What? F- what? Why? B.O.B.? Yeah. Grammy nominated artist. B. Yeah, B. I'll be real. B. fucking sucks. I'll be oh, real. Also, what a fucking category. Grammy award for best pop collaboration with vocals. They're really just trying to give anybody a fucking yeah. award. Yeah, this is. I see why. Can we can we go over? Can we go over who won? Who won some of these? Uh, Herbie Hancock, Pink. Oh, the, just the recreation of Imagine. That was the year it was. Oh, they stopped in 2011. They got rid of it. Oh, uh, stupid fucking category. Yeah, it is. But Jason Mraz and Kobe Calais won for Lucky. Oh my God, yeah, that's a, that was made um, for them. Damn, Kobe Calais. Oh, that's kind of interesting. Shout outs to her. That's kind of interesting. Hope you're doing. <laughs> in 2006, Gorillas and De La Soul won for Feel Good Inc. And, uh, they're not even featured on the song, you know. It's gorillas. Yeah, word. Everyone thought gorillas had a rapper in it. Oh yeah, that that's the fucking award Santana and Rob Thomas won for smooth. That's why smooth is Grammy nominated. That makes sense, I guess. Um, I think it's Grammy nominated because it's a fucking incredible song. Because it's a song. banger. Yeah, you're not wrong. You're not wrong, though. I'll give you that. Thanks for watching the Joystick Show, you ho ho hoes. Yeah. Um, we're here to bring up some Christmas cheer. Uh, it'd some be really- Christmas queer. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. It'd be really helpful if you could like this episode of the Joystick Show and if you subscribe to Joystick. Yeah. That's us. That's our. That's the boys. That's me. Yeah. That's Dylan. It says right. Yeah, that's the name of the show. So right subscribe there. to us. Help us add numbers to that number. <laughs> and um, we're gonna catch you on episode one twenty, which is actually gonna be the Christmas special. Yeah, it's gonna be more lights, more guys, more snow, more Chris. Oh my God! Come on, not the hiccups now. Yeah. More Christmas. A segment, perhaps. And uh, honestly, just a lot more holiday content on the way. So until then, um, join us on the cool side of the pillow. Catch you on the spaghetti farm. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just there with like a giant rake, just like twirling yeah. the spaghetti. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, what I'm. That's what I am at. It was like a pit. Yeah, exactly. Have you ever yeah. seen the fucking bowl with the cheese in it? Uh huh. Yeah, it's that. Got it. Yeah.